is the original headliner. This is what Julian and I refer to as the old pub ceiling look. This is like the worst pub ceiling. This is where we need some of that interlude music. We've done our test piece at home and we're about to try it out and it's really hot it's down here. Hot. We're melting. The moment of truth. Yeah. Well, we're going from this, the pub ceiling look. In just 45 minutes or an hour, we've gone to a proper headliner. So my assistant today has been Josh and he's down here. He's just about to do some vacuuming. We're going to clean up now. No! Another milestone moment. The pub ceiling is gone. The pub ceiling's gone. I am very happy. I think this is a huge improvement. It's just amazing. Right, we need to get all our food and stuff on board now so we can go and have some fun. <laughs> this is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. This is the original headliner that came with the boat. This is what Julian and I refer to as the old pub ceiling look. And this is what we are about to replace in the main saloon area. Come with me. This is headliner that we replaced, I think 13 years ago, when we actually did most of the V-birth. And what we did here was we got some foam backed vinyl and we glued it straight onto the fiberglass. We had to remove parts of the timber to do that. So these sections here all came off because this was actually being done at the time. And then they were all put back on again and plugged. Where the timber wasn't removed, we had to put quad along the join. The join wasn't very neat. So it needed something to cover it. And that's this teak quad. The other issue with doing this is that I'm not sure if you can see up here, but the fiberglass surface isn't very even. And so it's quite a dimpled finish. It's okay in this cabin. It doesn't really um, detract from it too much, but it could be better, we think. This is what we did with the headlining in the forward head. So this, because it's a wet area, this is a shower here. This is actually white llama panel. And again, where there was a join, uh, or we couldn't sort of make it match perfectly to the curve, we've got quad, teak quad, which goes along the join. Here, again, because this was redone at the time, um, this timber came off and was varnished and put back on. So we've got a third idea for the saloon, and we're about to try a test piece. This is the main saloon, galley, nav station area. We ripped all of this out at the beginning of the refit. And so we're left with even worse than the pub ceiling. This is like the worst pub ceiling. So the issue we've got is this lip, this teak lip. So it would be quite easy, we thought, to pattern up these sections and get a piece of marine ply and cover it with our nice foam back vinyl, pop it in. You could even maybe have them removable. We initially thought Velcro in or whatever, and then you'd get the nice vinyl, but you wouldn't get all the dimples in it because it would just go onto the smooth ply. But this lip, this is just not removable without a lot of problems. Before they've put these beams in, they've uh, put the foam back vinyl over the whole area and then they've put these roof beams on. They're a two-part piece. They've screwed the first piece in into the plywood cord um, coach roof and then they've nailed and glued 
a finishing strip over this, but a, a, a six mil finishing strip here, which forms a lip here. So there's no way that you can get this off. If you tried to take it off, you'd destroy it. So we're stuck with that. We wanted to make uh, plywood inserts um, to pop in here that were covered with the uh, foam back vinyl. But of course they, they won't go in because of the lip. So what we've done in the area over here is we've routed off the lip. So we've taken that lip off with the router, taken this lip off here, varnished it. We've still got a lip here. So we're gonna see how that works in there. And we've still got the lip on the other side. And we should be able to just pop this in. There's a light here, some light fittings. There's some bolts that come down from a winch and a jammer. And um, these are gonna actually hold this piece on, or so we hope. What we're doing here is a test piece on one of our headliner sections. So this is some foam backed vinyl that we got from, I think it was from Bainbridge in Sydney, it was a long time ago. We have got one section down above the nav station that we're trialling out a new method of, uh, of doing this and this is this piece. So we're now going to apply the glue uh, to the fabric and also to a piece of marine ply that's been ever -dured. We'll wrap the fabric around it and we're going to take it down to the boat and see how it fits. This is the glue that uh, was supplied with the roll of foam. It's just a 3M product spray adhesive. Two surfaces, bonds, foam, fabric, wood and more. If this is successful, we're not going to do it with this because it would take multiple cans and we'd just be, yeah, it's... We're gonna to go to Mark from Elite Marine Trimming who's got a spray gun and a workshop and can do it all uh, much faster. But what we'll do is make the patterns, well, Julian will make the patterns and we'll supply the, um, the marine ply cut to size and we'll just give Mark the foam back vinyl and get him to spray on. This is another reason. Mark to why we're going to get Mark to do it because the amount of product I think we waste just be criminal mm. anyway. Well, that's piece number one. So now we'll move that over there. Okay. And then you can spray the, the wood and then we put this back underneath. The reason that this is wood is coated with Everjaw is um, just in case there is a misfortune to get any water leaks or anything it just save it from becoming rotten or anything like that now we wait for this to go tacky this is where we need some of that interlude music <laughs> It's very humid at the moment, 82% humidity, so stuff like this does take a little bit longer to do its thing, all the moisture in the air. So we're going to hold a corner of this each, mm. place it right over our marks, mm. and just drop it on there. Alright, let's give it a go. So now what we need to do is trim that bit off, quick spray around the edge there, mm -hmm. and then fold those bits over. The trimmer said to um, trim this overlapping bit about an inch to two inches away from the edge. So doing it about an inch and a half. When we did this on the uh, little pieces that go inside the underside of the sliding, two sliding hatches, I actually cut it a little bit too close to the timber. So we've learned from that mistake. You would never notice it because it's tucked right in, but now that we're doing this and it's going to be exposed, we're just Doing it differently. Mark, um, the upholsterer, he doesn't use glue on the underside. He uses stainless staples, doesn't he? Um, yeah. But he didn't have any he could give us. So for this test piece, we're just going with the glue. It, it really won't matter. But apparently the idea behind using staples is that if you need to tweak it, you can do that. Yeah, once that's on there, that's it, it ain't coming off. No we've done our test piece at home and we're about to try it out and it's really hot it's down here hot. we're melting the moment of truth yeah. 
I think it just needs a bit of a press up. Yeah, well, we'll glue it up in there. Yeah. We'll put some big blobs of sealant behind it and we'll put some struts there and push it up. Yeah, it just needs a push up mm. here. So look at the clearance. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's perfect. And there, that's what I'm interested in because I know that all this can be made to work. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should get Mark down to have a look. This was the part when Mark from Elite Marine Trimming came down to the boat to give us some advice. Unfortunately, it was also the part where our old GoPro 6 decided to give up the ghost on recording sound. Julian had already patterned the coach roof sections and made some of the marine ply panels, as well as starting to experiment with a method he'd been discussing with Mark for bending the ply into the tricky outer edge curve. Since we can't bring you either Mark's pearls of wisdom or Julian's sparkling wit, you'll just have to take my word for it that it was a scintillating conversation. I'm sure you get the picture anyway, so on with the show. What I'm doing is preparing the 3 mil ply for the vinyl head liner. It's going to be glued to this 3 mil ply. I've made patterns, which, um, which I'll show you in a second. I think I've covered how I make these patterns with the strips of plywood. So this is one of the biggest patterns for the headliner. And I'll, I've finished uh, cutting these out. I'll just go and get one of the headliner pieces that I've already cut out. There's two of these. There's two uh, seven and a half foot long uh, headliners just forward of the galley across the saloon. And uh, we're going to cover these in, in uh, foam backed vinyl. And then we're going to glue them up into place. Now because our our coach roof is actually curved at the ends. The headliner used to be glued to the fiberglass in there, so it obviously followed the curve of the of the coach roof. So plywood's a bit stiffer than uh, vinyl. So what I've actually found after talking to Mark about this as well is um, how to get this curve. And I did a test the other day and uh, glued a piece of vinyl to it and. All I've done is uh, just a couple of light, light score marks to cut the outer layer of plywood, which is actually really thin. And uh, lo and behold, we can actually give it a little tweak, put the curve in, and the headliner obviously follows whatever it's glued to. So this seems to work quite well. And I did a, a bigger test on a bigger sheet just to make sure it's still going to work. And I've, as you can see, I've made the cuts in the outer layer of, of ply, which is only about half a mil thick. And you can just, just by giving it a bit of a bend until it cracks, and you end up with, um, with a curve. The actual curve we're trying to follow is a little bit tighter than this. Um, so, I've, so I've changed the spacing to 20 mil between the cuts. That's what I've done on this test piece, and it curves nicely. So when this is glued up against the fiberglass coach roof, it will hold its shape and hopefully do the trick. I'm just using my test piece as a jig just to mark up the 20 mil spacings where I'm going to make these cuts. So I've clearly marked this side up. This is for when when they go off to be covered with foam, we're not going to do that. We're going to use uh, Mark, who's, who's got spray foam, spray gun to do this properly, and breathing gear so he doesn't get poisoned. And I've just marked everything really clearly, so there's no mistakes about which side to glue the vinyl on. A nice sharp blade, put one here somewhere. curve in it. This is the bottom. The vinyl will take that curve and when we evergure this, the evergure will run into these cracks and I think it will hold it in place. So there's one of them ready with the curve in it. Okay so we're at the, uh, putting up the headliner stage and we're, we're pretty happy with the way it's working out. What we're doing down here is I'm just uh, preparing this one. This is just a little one and um, as per mark the upholsterer's instructions from elite marine trimming 
we uh, we put them like a little blob, like a tea, teaspoon size blob, six inches apart, all over the panel. This is what we're going to do for all the panels. This little panel is quite a tight fit. It almost holds itself in place, so uh, it's a bit of a squeeze to get it in. Anyway, here we go. Let's do it. I got it in just now without the glue on it. Sometimes you put the glue in and suddenly everything changes. As I said, it's quite a tight fit this one, but it's going in. Here we go. Sticks already, supports a bit up here. We've got old scrap bits of uh, 10 mil square teak that I'm using here, and a bit of uh, two by one spread the load. Just pushing that up there nicely. I'm just squeezing the sealant out, but not flattening the sealant, otherwise, it won't work. So that blob of sealant has just got to squish out nicely and give like a um, that sort of size contact area. If we ever want to get these out again for whatever reason, then it would probably be possible. That curve's holding nicely in there. It's the curve I want, so I'm not going to put any pressure on it. Doesn't need it. I'm quite happy with that. These are quite handy. Two strips. Once you've got the length you want, put a clamp onto it. A couple of clamps. You've got adjustable props and then just put a bit of flex in them, bend them in, in place and that's it. Untailed in place, let it go off for a few hours, done. So the one up the front here was the first one which was put in by Mark and it's a couple of hours since he put that in so um, yeah I might risk taking the props off and see if it's glued. This one's virtually holding itself in apart from bit up here certainly in the in the edge there it just locates beautifully in the in that slot that forms there you can see the slot is quite a deep slot so uh, I'm going to test fit the other ones now well I just put this one in and uh, I wish I videoed it really because it's there's a really tight fit and uh, it doesn't need any props it's just it's just holding itself in and it looks look bloody good um, just gonna pull the wire through that's trapped there a little bit and there's my wire for the for the lights and uh, that that one it was a tight squeeze to get it in but um, there's no wrinkles in the curve mark had to stretch it over this bit to make sure it wouldn't wrinkle when we put it when if it changed its shape slightly and it's worked brilliantly well we're going from this the pub ceiling look in just 45 minutes or an hour we've gone to a proper headliner and I've done one of them over here we've got one in and Mark put that one that one up I've done this one I've just done this one I'm just about to put this one up on the other side of the mouse we'll see what sort of fit I'll dry fit that first always dry fit things Never put glue on something and then expect it to fit first time. Fit it without glue. Most people know that. Some people don't. So, dry fit. Well, this morning I'm on to the last piece of headliner to put in, and it's this one. It may look like it's in, but it's actually just fitted. Uh, it's dry fitted. This was. This is over the galley, and it was very tight, and it took me a while to get it in. By the time I got it in, I was running out of time. I had to had to leave and do something else so I'm going to take this one out now and glue it in. So we've got this one in, this is the last one to go in and uh, you can see how I've held it up there, I've just cut some bits of dowel and some bits of quad, these are actually teak quad that I had left over from years ago from another job and if you just spring them in place they can hold the headliner up, it's pretty simple but effective and we'll just leave those in there. Now the, the sealant's quite thick so it'll take a while to go off but they're all in place. So what I'm going to start doing now is putting some lights up so we've got some light when we go out. 
another milestone moment. It is the last fixture going into the newly replaced headliner. Woo! A nicely polished up and lacquered hook hook to hold the port lights open. So these were in here before, so we're just putting them back. So I'm just lining this up. So it's screwing into the marine ply that the foam backed vinyl is glued onto. So that whole piece is sicker flexed onto the coach roof. The pub ceiling is gone. The pub ceiling's gone. And because we've glued this onto a piece of three mil ply, you can see it's all dead smooth. And so that's an improvement on what they did from, from brand new, which was just glue the vinyl with its foam backing onto, straight onto the fiberglass, which wasn't done in a mold. It was done in an upside down mold. So um, it was pretty uneven. And uh, now it's not, now it's nice and flat so we've well, improved on that and um we can have the port lights open now i am very happy i think this is a huge improvement it's just amazing <sighs> right we need to get all our food and stuff on board now so we can go and have some fun <laughs> <laughs>